Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, and welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And uh, for those of you who may have not seen the program before here, we uh, deal with veterans, military information, and uh, we also show the interaction between the veterans and the military with the local community. Uh, we're gonna hit the ground running this morning. We have two special guests. One is uh, Pastor Bill Payne, and also we have Mr. Rodney Boucher, who is gonna be joining us in a few minutes. But um, for right now, uh, Pastor Bill, I mean, Pastor Payne, uh, good afternoon or good morning. How are you doing today? Yes, good morning, Calvin. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me on your show. Great, yeah. Um, just want to let you know, the viewing audience know uh, what organization you're with, and you're with the, um, Honolulu, I'm sorry, if, <laughs> with the uh, Seventh-day Adventist? Yes, yes. Okay. I am the pastor for the Honolulu Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. Right. I know that there's something coming up, but there's a lot of activities out there to help the, the veterans in many different ways. But uh, on, uh, in August, there's something that's coming up that, I'm, that I'm, I understand that you want to let the community know what's going on. And uh, you can tell us a little bit about that, sir. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to share this. Uh, I was looking for a way in which we can serve our veterans as well as our homeless community, those who are underinsured and uninsured. Mm -hmm. And uh, this idea of doing a free clinic was brought to me. And this free clinic is uh, includes dental, medical, and vision. And so we know that it's difficult for our veterans to receive um, dental care because it's so expensive mm -hmm. and many of them um, do not pay to get that done. And so this is one area that we are able to serve, um, serve them. We know that the medical they're able to go and get and uh, sometimes vision as well. Mm -hmm. But um, this is a, a program that we wanted to do for, for veterans as well as our homeless population, those are uninsured and underinsured. Right. So we are going to set up about 15, um, 15 dental stations mm -hmm. where extraction will be taking place, cleaning will be taking place, and uh, we are partnering with local dentists as well as some will be coming in from mainland. Right. Uh, the organization that we're doing this with is uh, called Amen Adventist Medical uh, Network, Evan Evangelism Network, I'm sorry, Adventist Medical Evangelism Network. Mm. And they have done this in uh, American Samoa. They've done it on different places in mainland. They have serviced over 30,000 people. Right. And um, it is a, a networking of doctors, dentists, opt op optometrists, uh, nurses and um, local people who want to serve the community. Right. I know that you uh, put out a call for volunteers in the medical field. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that, sir? Yes. So we have a website that um, medical people, dent dentists, um, doctors, nurses, um, and uh, optometrists can go on and they can register. Mm -hmm. And by registering, we do want them to register. By registering, then they will be protected under the liability insurance policy that we have. And um, and so it's um, it's a, a malpractice coverage. But the website is www.amenfreeclinics. Dot org. Okay. And if they go on that website, they can register as a volunteer and they will look at the Honolulu location and they will see that on that website and they can go through and um, do their registration. So that is Amen Free Clinic, clin Free Clinics dot org. Okay. And so we're looking for um, people who are willing to be counselors, willing to, to translate, um, people who are social workers, people who want to do some counseling, lifestyle um, lifestyle uh, counselors, mm -hmm. and, um, 
and also ministers and, and clergy. We, we invite um, anyone and everyone to come by. Uh, we're, we're looking at 250, 300 people per day. Right. And um, we want to service these individuals as best as we possibly can. And this is over four days. Right. This will be August 23, which is a Thursday, mm -hmm. and 24, a Friday, and then 26 and 27, which is a Sunday and Monday. Okay. Uh, besides medical personnel, uh, what other volunteers do you need? Uh, people like interpreters or people, individuals who are bilingual that would help, help assist? Yes. yes. We, we do have a large, um, let's say, a Micronesian uh, community. We have um, a, a good Spanish community. We have different different um, places. Of course, here in in Hawaii, we have a beautiful mix right. of um, Polynesian people and um, and um, Japanese and Korean. Mm -hmm. And so we we do invite um, anyone who have that need and who to come. And so we'll need, if they do not speak English really well, then we would need to have interpreters. So okay. if there are those who want to um, come by and um, say dedicate four hours mm -hmm. or maybe a full day, okay. um, we're going to be open from eight to four. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just, just wanting to serve. Okay. Also, the Salvation Army will be bringing their big truck with um, with um, donations, with um, items that people can peruse through and get clothing and different things that they might need. Um, we have in the Hawaii Vision, they're going to be um, bringing their big truck and um, uh, their vision center. They're going to be here. Mm -hmm. And there are other, um, others who serve the veterans. We're going to have uh, a number of booths set up where as people are waiting to be served or they have been served, mm -hmm. they can um, walk around and go to different places yeah. uh, where they can get additional services. Great. Okay, uh, Pastor, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do a follow-up program on this, help to get the information out. And of course, you have a lot of different sources that are willing to help. Uh, but we'll be back in touch with you if you'd like to come and join us on the program. We'd love to have you. Uh, but uh, for right now, could you just give out your number uh, one more time and uh, so our viewers can uh, give me a call and see what they can help to assist? Sure. My office number is 808-524-1352. Okay. And the website to go on is www.amenfreeclinics. Org. Great. Okay. Well, Pastor, thank you very much. And I'm quite sure this is going to help a lot of people out. Um, and it just, of course, goes to show the spirit of giving here in the state of Hawaii and uh, also those who are helping to support our military and veterans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Griffin. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Great. Okay. Have a nice day. Okay. Uh, give them a call. There's so much to be done over here. Um, Actually, Spirit of Aloha as well, and good and all that good stuff. Anyhow, speaking of Aloha. Aloha. Rodney, thank you for coming on the program. <clears throat> thank May you for I having me. you, Rodney. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit about yourself, anyhow. I know that you're a former military also. <clears throat> yes, uh, 24 years in the Navy, uh, retired Master Chief. Uh, took me from ships, submarines, NATO, uh, special operations, uh, naval special operations uh, support, and uh, then I had my last three and a half years here on beautiful Oahu hmm. and, uh, and met my wife and that sealed the deal on staying here. <laughs> okay, here on the program, Leah, we do talk about trying to um, enlighten people to some of the things that the veterans and the military are involved in as far as with right. the communities. And of course, the one big thing that you're involved in is with the Red Cross and also with the CERT program, which is the Community Emergency Response Team. Uh, could you tell our viewers a little bit about that and uh, how they could benefit from your knowledge? The, the Red Cross is everywhere. You know, the Hawaii State Chapter has been very active. Uh, I've been involved with the Red Cross for my entire career, uh, working as a water safety lifeguard and then also in my, my, my day job as communications electronics for the Navy, we were always involved with the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. That led me into here when I decided to stay here. Mm -hmm. I got more involved with the Red Cross working at the shelters oh, okay. that we open up for hurricanes, natural disasters, or whatever. 
And then now, logistically, we're, sh we're shipping a lot of stuff off to the Big Island that they need right. in support, of which I wanted to thank you for being there yesterday and loading in your sweat equity. Oh, okay. uh, it's a first aid kit. You might have needed it yesterday, yeah, but uh, it. today it, uh, it's for helping us yesterday load up a container well, that is being shipped off to the Big Island uh, for their support mm -hmm. for the Red Cross over there. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, Red Cross uh, led me into CERT, which mm -hmm. is Community Emergency Response Team Training, which was discussed before. Uh, and it is involved with giving people enough knowledge base uh, to help themselves in reference to them and their families first. Right. As much knowledge as possible ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Then you help your community as best as you can and you build your teams off of that. Mm -hmm. There are multiple teams of volunteers in the community. Many of them are military veterans. Right. Uh, I'll discuss a little bit more about the schools, the Manoa and UH West Oahu's uh, student veterans. Okay. But the uh, CERT program is, is something that everybody can get involved. It's free. It's 20 to 22 hours of training that is given uh, via the Department of Emergency Management CERT teams. Uh, I'm one of the leeward coordinators, and then there's other coordinators for, throughout the island of Oahu, mm -hmm. as well as for the other islands, which are very active on Kauai and the Big Island now due to the situations with the flooding and the lava flows and the earthquakes. Right. Yeah, I know one thing that's coming up right now, RIMPAC, which happens every two years. Yes. Uh, so you're involved in that also, and also with the CERT teams um, coming on as um, Role model, I mean, role, role players as far as with the victims, right? Yeah. Things like the RIMPAC uh, exercise has been very generous as far as the medical side, which uh, the Medical Reserve Corps is something uh, that ties into your uh, chancellor, uh, the pastor earlier. And uh, what we're working with with the Leeward CERT program as well as the Windward CERT program, we're working with RIMPAC. They're going to provide medevac mm -hmm. for some of our survivors, our our role players, our CERT team members. We're going to have exercises uh, at different parks, and we're going to do a CERT triage of our medical survivors, mm -hmm. and then there's the medevacs come in and take them to the location for RIMPAC. Right. Uh, they'll further triage and support them, and then they'll be brought back to our communities, whether Windward and Eva, mm -hmm. and then we'll, we'll finish out the exercise with them. Yeah. That's on July 12th, and the public is welcome to, to come and observe. Mm -hmm. The catch-all, it's from 06 to 0800 in the morning, so it's before traffic gets too bad. But it's in, uh, if you want more information, uh, I can provide you the information uh, yeah. uh, for that. Uh, about the CERT program, <clears throat> there's within limits, there's no, uh, within reasonable limits, there, as far as age, there's, because there's many different um, skill sets that are needed. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that also as yeah. far as? What we try to tell people or what's part of the, the mandate is there's a job for everybody that's available. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be uh, within a certain age group. You don't have to be, uh, it's available for ADA, uh, American Disabilities Act, uh, disabilities. Everybody can have a job in it. You might not be going through a door to help survivors in search and rescue, mm -hmm. but you can be helping with this, uh, the logistics, the administration side of making, keeping track and helping survivors. Mm -hmm. And that's what CERT does. We're there to help our community and we primarily are there to help our families and ourselves first, mm -hmm. take care of ourselves and our family first, mm -hmm. then you go ahead and help your community, right. your neighborhoods. Yeah. And that's what the CERT teams do. Okay. They do provide some information uh, in, the, in some pamphlets and stuff that, you know, that are available yep. on honolulu.gov backslash DEM. Lots of good information. It talks about where the CERT uh, training is being held throughout the island of Oahu. Mm -hmm and uh, of which you participated in and graduated yourself. Yeah. You survived the CERT training. <laughs> Speaking of surviving, we're gonna to have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll continue, and like sure. so we're getting as much information as we can right. about the program anyhow. Right. Uh, stay tuned to Hawaiian Uniform. We'll be back soon. ThinkTechHawaii.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com.au.com
ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組ですこんにちはハワイ各週の月曜日2時からぜひ皆さん見てくださいホストの国瀬ゆかりでしたアロハ I'm J. Fidel, ThinkTech ThinkTech loves energy I'm the host of Mina, Marco and Me which is Mina Morita former chair of the PUC former legislator and、uh, Energy Dynamics a consulting organization in energy Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Okay, you're back with a Hawaiian uniform. Again, I'm your host, Calvin Griffin, and we have Mr. Rodney Boucher, who's with the CERT team and also with the、uh, Red Cross, who's enlightening us to what's happening in the community and how you can join、uh, them to、um, make things better. Because、uh, I know one of the things that、uh, is stress is preparedness. And、um, it's better to be proactive than wait, you know, because it seems nowadays, like, say, with our, all the different government programs, even with、uh, FEMA, the Red, Cross,、uh, the Red Cross, and also with the Homeland Security, that's one thing they do stress as far as being prepared for the, you know, for the unexpected, you know. And one thing here in Hawaii with the different,、um, you know, the melty pot, as you would call it, or whatever it is, you know.、Um, We do have a lot of people that do want to give back, and so many, many different、um, cultures, cultures. And speaking of which,、um, I'm quite sure, like, say, with all the different、uh, activities going on and the different languages, I guess you do also look for or recruit people who are multilingual. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, what you discussed、uh, bef- previously,、mm-hmm. uh, we work with the Foreign Language Service,、mm. uh, which is here in Honolulu. They provide、uh, ling- linguistic translation skills.、Right. They've been to our CERT training、mm-hmm. and they, they provided us with a- facets to de- help develop the different language barriers or break down the barriers、right. so that the training can continue in other people's normal language、mm-hmm. if English is not their first language or second language.、Mm-hmm. Uh, what we do try to do,、uh, I, I'm a volunteer with the EVA Emergency Preparedness Committee, and we started back in 2011 when a wind shear effect took down all our power in EVA Beach、mm. for, in some cases, 48, 72, 96 hours.、Mm-hmm. And that created a, a vacuum as far as need.、Mm-hmm. And what we did, we worked with the Department of Emergency Management, and we did with the Hawaii. Emergency Management Agency.、Right. And we come up with different things. The main thing is you make a plan, you build a kit, and you stay informed. When you make a plan, we ask people to make an emergency plan. This is available at that site at honolulu.gov, DEM, and it's available、uh, throughout different agencies, hawaiiemergencymanagement.gov,、right. as well. And that's what it does it gives you a chance. To make a plan where you have all your contacts for all your family、mm-hmm. people at work, people at school, people at home, people in transit.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so you write down all the information.、Mm-hmm. You write down where, you, if you have an emergency at home, where do you meet?、Mm-hmm. Outside the home, away from the danger.、Yeah. If, if you're spread throughout the island, then you go、mm-hmm. and, and you have a certain, certain focal point.、Mm-hmm. It talks about the fact that the cell phones will probably be inundated, which they were、mm-hmm. last year. Uh, for the tropical storms, as well as even sooner, as far as what's happened、uh, with the Big Island, et cetera.、Mm-hmm. So, we talk about having an out of state contact that you can work with,、right. which happened to us、uh, with the earthquake on the Big Island back in 2006, I believe, and it knocked out power here.、Mm-hmm. I, was on air, you know, I was on a Hawaiian air flight stuck on the rampart. My wife was in baggage claim for five hours.、Mm. We communicated through my sister in Arizona、yeah. because even though we were 200 yards apart or less,、mm-hmm. we couldn't talk to each other.、Mm-hmm. And so it's very important to build that plan and practice that plan, is the other part of that. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people,、um, unfortunately, are not really aware of what could happen when, because when communication goes down, you know, it's very stressful. And I know in the,、uh, earlier you mentioned about being part of a CERT team, what you want to do is take care of your family first. The thing is, is not being selfish. The thing is alleviating the stress on those who are trained to try to go ahead and serve in the others in the community, anyhow, you know.、Yes. But I think that、um, well, one of the things is that with the,、um, again, being prepared, because some of us are maybe fortunate enough, like say, to be able to have. Different storage,、uh, you know, emergency things on hand, anyhow.、Right. But for those who are not, you know, 
what it is when you are prepared with your family and yourself and you have those things on hand is less of a stress on the system for, you know, when people who really do, you know, can do need it anyhow. You know. We are on an island of over a million plus, mm -hmm. uh, including our visitors yeah. uh, when they come in. There is very functionality, now that I've been dealing with some logistics issues, it's very hard for me to think about having enough supplies that last for any long duration uh, situation. Right. Uh, the situation in Kauai or the Big Island are the perfect examples this year mm -hmm. of what can happen and what you need to build on. We ask people uh, to have two weeks of preparedness items, and you start with one day's item with one person. To deal that, you have to plan for water and food, and you work off of that. Uh, if I do one person per gallon of water, this container holds six, six gallons. It's 50 pounds when it's full, mm -hmm. and there's certain things you want to do to make sure, but you can put tap water in it, fill it up, and that's your six day supply for one person. Mm -hmm. If you have two, three, or four people in your family, you need to plan for that against the timeline of instead of six days, you might have three days. And if you have enough of these containers, you don't need to go out and buy cases and cases and cases of bottled water. Yep. But if that's what you do, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. The thing in reference to being prepared is you make sure that you and your family are safe first. All right. Then your family f feels safe if you are gone mm -hmm. and you feel satisfied that they are, can support themselves. Right. That is the key issue in what, everything we do, whether it's Red Cross, they say the same thing as CERT does, as any uh, Hawaii EMA, Hawaii Emergency Management, uh, previous civil defense, mm -hmm. or FEMA. They always say that you have to take care of your family first. Mm -hmm. The one thing about enlightening or uh, informing people, the sooner you train them, the better off. And I know that you, before, make sure we have enough time to talk about this, um, there are programs geared towards the younger groups, like children or pre, well, not preschool, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, actually there is, or not so much preschool, but in, uh, we do presentations to Keiki yeah. uh, at the different schools. And one of my favorite jokes is that I bring, bring this out. This is the front pages uh, within a phone book. And the question always comes up from the kids is, mm -hmm. what's a phone book? In today's <laughs> world, social media wise, it's different, but yeah. for the people that still remember what a phone book is, mm -hmm. the information is there, and if you still get a phone book, then please take it and use it and, and be aware of it. Yeah. That it's a disaster preparedness guide. <clears throat> it has a lot of good information, contacts, emails, phone lines, and uh, where to call for more information. Yeah. It's always available. Uh, we do a lot of programs with the Red Cross. They have Red Cross clubs. Mm -hmm. And CERT is also doing that within high schools. Mm -hmm. We work with the JROTCs, the different civic clubs within schools, and so that they build their knowledge. If, you, if We've learned, uh, or at least I have learned, that if you deal with the children first, the young adults, they will get their parents involved. Mm -hmm. And that goes into what happens when we have our, when Eva has their preparedness fair on September 8th, mm -hmm if I can plug it. Yeah. Uh, September 8th, Saturday, we have a EVA, Get Ready EVA Preparedness Fair. And we will be giving away thousands of dollars of preparedness items, uh, courtesy of our sponsors and our grants. We're a nonprofit, and they allow us mm -hmm. to give this stuff out for free, as well as give the training right. circumstances, like the CERT training, Red Cross CPR, mm -hmm. AED training that comes up. We navigate through all the different agencies, and especially Red Cross and, and Hawaii Heart Foundation, mm -hmm. to give out these different training cycles. And one of those is all, all this stuff is always available online as well uh, to deal with things. Uh, there are some great manuals, uh, booklets that are available throughout the community. Uh, Hawaii Electric has a great preparedness guide. I, I'll bring it out here shortly, but this is the homeowner's handbook that the UHC grant publicizes. Uh, it's online, it's available online, social media, as well as UHC Grant, or uhmanoa.edu, and you can link to there. But uh, we saved uh, $400, my wife and I saved $400, using that book to put hurricane clips on our roof mm -hmm. to our wall foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, and once we justified that and showed it and they came out and verified it, we saved $400 on our home insurance, right. which is very fundamentally something that everybody should and can look at. Because mm -hmm. yeah, we immediately used the $400, but it still is good to have that 
claim to be. Right. Okay. Uh, as far as preparedness, one thing, I just got to ask this dumb question. Uh, with all the visitors that come over here, do you work with the hotels or the tourist industry, like say, to enlighten them to what they need to do so to make sure that, again, that there's not a over where the local populace or the response is not overburdened by the visitors that are here? Yes, there is. And throughout the Visitors Association, they have a committee mm -hmm. that deals with preparedness, of mm -hmm. which they were very active. Uh, dealing with the Kauai floods mm -hmm. and now with the Big Island. Mm -hmm. They're working with the hotel industries throughout there. And they work very closely with us through CERT, but primarily through the Department of Emergency Management and the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. Mm -hmm. they, they have a, a uh, membership into these, both organizations, right. so that we know that our volunteers, our visitors, mm -hmm. are coming here to enjoy themselves. <coughs> They might not necessarily be coming with 14-day supply or awareness of other than hitting the beach or right. whatever their activities are. Mm -hmm. So each hotel, the vast majority of hotels, provide this information on their broadcast channels as well as written uh, uh, information on their doors as well as in their uh, complexes, right. their rooms. Okay. And it's always available. And uh, many of the hotels have upgraded uh, since uh, tropical storm Azel mm -hmm. and the circumstances we had from 2016. Right. So it's very, uh, very beneficial that our hotel industry is working very proactively mm -hmm. uh, with the different agencies and community groups. Right. Uh, and I would like to say that uh, part of those community groups is our neighborhood boards. Mm -hmm. Throughout Oahu specifically, I was a member for five years, and it, it's very beneficial to have your uh, elected representatives be yeah. involved in preparedness, and many of them are, and right. that's, I'm very thankful for those. Great, okay. Uh, we're getting down to the wire. We got less than a minute anyhow, so I'll give you a chance to go ahead, uh, the contact numbers you want to put out again, or? Right, uh, if you go to honolulu.gov backslash DEM, at the website provides a vast majority of information mm -hmm. uh, that, you, that, that I've put out here, yeah. including making a plan you build your kit information and how to stay informed. And that could be just a little AM, FM radio yep. that can be plugged into whatever you need to do, or it can be your social media contacts outlets. Good. Okay. Uh, we'll do a follow-up. I'm quite sure you've got other ways of getting the word out there. But, uh, yes. of course, here at Think Tech, we try to do what we can to be more community-minded anyhow. <clears throat> but I want to thank you for coming on the program. Um, definitely, like I say, check into the, uh, you know, the different programs and... I want to thank you for your time. I know you're very busy with the uh, situation in Hawaii, I mean, with uh, the Big Island and everything else. Well, you were involved with that very much yesterday. Um, How's very, your back? Very minimal. I'm okay. fine. <laughs> I would like, if I may, a shout out to the American Red Cross. If you go to that website or you just Google American Red Cross, you'll you'll find more information of if you wish to volunteer. Which the Red Cross always needs volunteers specifically within yeah. your own communities. All right. Okay. We're down to the wire. I think we got about five seconds left, so we're doing that period of time. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Thank you for viewing in. Thank you, and God bless until that time.